check the settings. It looks okay. Hi, I think that we are broadcasted. Okay, thank you, Ludo. Perfect. So I will do a full demo using the autonomous database, using some SQL, but I will start with some uh, NoSQL API. And I've shared my screen, so you should see it. Everything that I will show you is there in a Jupyter notebook so that you can read everything, the queries and the outputs, and also run them yourself. And I think I will start the demo on it just to show you that if you use this uh, notebook, the link, I put that in the chat, just SQL 101.bashow.net. And it set up the connection because it uh, downloads the instant client, for example, and the Python uh, drivers to be able to connect from the Jupyter notebook. And when it is done, you can do the cleanup to start it again if you want to see. And I've put some explanation and what we will run later. For the moment, I will clear all outputs and just show you what I will run from there. Here I am in Python. I'm not doing SQL for the moment, even if I'm connected to a SQL database. I'm using Python connected to Oracle. This means that I have the six Oracle driver. I declared a connection as a Soda uh, database. Soda is the API that looks like NoSQL to access to the Oracle database to make this API easy. And I will create a connection, just calling the create collection. You can put just a name. Here I mentioned that the key is a number. If I do not mention anything, it will put a key as a UID. And I will use the insert many just because I care of performance. I don't want to do a one round trip per object that I put there. The idea in NoSQL is that you don't have to think about the schema in advance. You can put data as JSON objects. And this is why it is simple for the developers. Developers have objects in their code, Python or Java, and they just want to um, save it with the create method in the crude uh, uh, API. And rather than um, using an ORM like Hibernate, which transforms that to SQL, they can, with Soda, with this API provided by Oracle, they can use the same kind of access directly uh, from their code to the database. I'm running that, so in the Jupyter Notebook, you just click and it runs. It is connected to my autonomous database uh, in the free tier. And I've created all those employees. I'm using the same data as the usual uh, ex uh, Scott Tiger example in Oracle. And I commit because it is a database. I, I commit my transaction and I query it with a NoSQL-like API, which is find on the collection, and it uses query by example. So I put an example of JSON manager does not exist, existing or false, and get one, and this returns one item where there is no manager because that's specific to the JSON uh, semi-structured data. You don't have to put all attributes in all columns. So this is what the developers really like through this API. They have objects, they just persist the object and query them. Exactly like other NoSQL databases like MongoDB, like DynamoDB, it's not the same API, there is no uh, uh, common syntax, but it is the same idea. You put documents or you get documents, right? In this Jupyter notebook, I will run some things from Python, and this is done directly in the notebook. And I will run something from command line from SQL CL, which I have installed. 
uh, in the beginning, uh, in the initialization at the beginning, and I will also use uh, some SQL plus things. At the end, if we have time, I will show you how I uh, connect to that, but you have also access to this notebook. So first, I will use SQL CL, the command line from SQL Developer, which in addition to this soda API as a soda command where you can list the collection, for example, I will run all that and we will see the, the result. And while it runs, I can show you soda help just to show you that you have a few commands to go to the this limited API where you can create a collection, get some data, remove, list what you have, count. So this is very simple. So here, soda list returned this employee's collection that I've just created before. Get employees all. This is like a select star from the table. It shows me everything, but it shows me only the key if I do not query further the attributes. And uh, because this data store is a key value, a document data store where you have a key, I decided to put the number, the employee number as a key there, but the JSON document, I do not retrieve it for the moment. Uh, I can query it with this um, query by example API, give me all employees in this collection and filter where employee name is Smith. And this is what returned Smith there. I can also query by the key. Of course, that's the fastest uh, access because everything is optimized in a key value data store to access uh, with the key. And I have the same there. Okay, so this is from SQL CL. And what I want to show you is that at first, when developers start, this JSON modeling is perfect because you don't have to care in advance about what you put. You will build your schema when you read it. When you will read the JSON, you will need to know how to decode it and how to use values from there. But for the moment, it starts simple. Now, let's say that your uh, data model evolves. You have more uh, use cases in your applications and you want to manage the department where the employee works and also some metadata, uh, some, some data about the, the department, like department name. And with the NoSQL approach, you put all that in the same item because in JSON, you can nest objects. So even if department is another object, you can nest it. And this is how I would replace those items, those employees, just adding a nested information there with information about the department. We are there in a NoSQL data model, which is hierarchical, like what was uh, before relational databases. And the advantage, it's quite easy to insert data, but if you need to update them, then you, you have a problem because let's say that one department has to change its name. You have to go to every employee in this department and change the information. And if you miss one, you will have inconsistency. And I will introduce relational concepts and SQL concepts uh, from that. And that was one reason relational uh, databases were invented to avoid this duplication, to avoid anomalies if you want to update some data like that. Okay, so this is what looks like uh, my employees when I choose a collection of employees and nesting uh, some department information in it. I have another problem in addition to the duplication. I have another problem here. I cannot store information about a department before I have any employees in them. And then I will realize that finally, a department is not only information about employees. It is an entity, a business object by itself. And I may need to store a department even if there are no employees. And with this model, I cannot. or 
I can do some tricks like creating a fake employee to put a department. And this is where I will uh, have to introduce more uh, collections. But before that, let's see the kind of access that we have there. We can access by the key and we can query it like uh, I did before with query by example. And the nice thing there, I can also query with something that is nested, for example, Sorry, I didn't run all those uh, replace, so I will run them. Each time it has to start SQL CL, which is uh, Java, and it's a bit uh, long. Here it is. And now that I have updated all that, if I query with a criteria on department location, New York, I will get the employees because I'm querying the employee con uh, co um, collection. I will get the employees in New York. So that's quite easy. However, because I don't want this duplicate information and because I may want to store department without employees, I will start to normalize my model. And instead of storing employees with their department information, I can decide to store department, a collection of departments, and within each department, the employees. This is what I'm doing there. So let me run it and show you. I create another collection there, and I will insert four items. And those four items, sorry, are the four departments, because here I have also the possibility to create a department without any employee. For each department, I have a list of employees. I can put whatever I want here, many employees or none of them. So now I have a different approach. And with the hierarchical model, this is a big difference with relational databases. With a hierarchical view, you have one access to the data. You have to decide, I want to manage employees and maybe look at their department, or I have to manage departments and employees in the department, but you cannot really do both. And this is what I have there when I start with departments. Just looking at the access there, if I run some queries, like give me the department uh, where the name is accounting or the department that is located in New York. So this is the one with name is accounting uh, here the same. New York, I can also query department who have any employee with name is King. So I can query in this net nested uh, structure. Uh, I can do an explain plan there because even if it's a NoSQL API, this is stored in a relational database. And in Oracle, you can exactly know how uh, Oracle has access to the data. And here you can see that I full scan the collection, and this is probably not what I want for this kind of thing, but you can index it and you can index on any attribute within this JSON document. I do that from Python there. So I get the, I open the collection and I just call the create index. And I mentioned the path in the, in the JSON on which I want to index. I want to index there on location. So let me run that. And if I run exactly the same query, give me the departments uh, for location New York, I will get the execution plan and there I ex uh, expect that I have uh, an index range scan and name my index, my index on location. And this is the name of my index. So you have, a nice API like NoSQL uh, to, to put documents in an easy way from the developers, but you have all the power from the relational database from Oracle where you can optimize the physical data model in behind. And this index is completely transparent. I don't have to query the index to get it. That's different in some, uh, in some other databases, for example, on DynamoDB. Uh, you can create indexes, but then if you want to use the index, you have to query it because you don't have this optimizer that you have there. Here we have an optimizer, the, the Oracle optimizer, which is quite complex. And it can understand that there is an index uh, uh, that can be faster. 
Okay, now I will do something else in my data model because I, in some use cases, I want to access to employees with their department information. For other use cases, I want to access to departments with their employees. Uh, but finally, I want to store all that in a shared database for all my applications. And this is where we start to normalize and to put the minimum on each entity. A department is only a department. The employee doesn't belong physically to the department. He is just attached uh, uh, to a department. And then I recreate my uh, department collection there with only information about the departments there. So that's my collection. I query one of them, department 10, to show you what I have there. No nested structure there. A simple two-dimension uh, table. It's uh, still a collection there, but it's like a table with a key and some uh, columns. Now, if I... Excuse me. Uh, so those are my department. And for the employees, if you remember, so let me run that. I will get one employee, King, to show you first how he looks like. If you remember, each employee in that collection had all information about the department. And now I will change that because I have a department collection with all information. So the only thing I need about departments is the department number. I'm replacing all my employees there. Sorry. Replacing there to store only the department number in the employee because that's the only information that belongs to the employee. This employee works in this department and I have all other information in the department collection. This is normal normalization and this is what we do in relational databases. Put in different tables uh, things that belong to different business entities. And then from that, I can work on department, I can work on employees, I, and we will see that we can join them at runtime as well. So we start to have a data model there that looks more like a relational uh, data model, more than a NoSQL da data model. And if I look at what I have behind that, be behind this soda, API, Oracle stores that in a relational data model. If I look at my tables, I can see that I have two, uh, two tables, one department, one uh, employees. And I will run some described and DBMS metadata on them to show you what Soda has created behind this simple call, a create collection. It has created a table with just two columns, one key. And you remember that I decided to give a name and the data type to this key. Uh, so that's the key for my employees collection and a JSON document to put everything else. Like in the NoSQL approach, you put a document uh, with, without the need to declare the schema and the attributes that you will find uh, in it. This is stored as a BLOB binary large object. Uh, document databases are not new. Oracle can store binary documents for a long time. And you can see that it is a bit optimized because before I created an index on something that is uh, within it. I cannot not do that directly in a BLOB. So this BLOB has a special format, which is declared their format Ozone. Ozone is the Oracle JSON format to the, the Oracle binary format to store JSON uh, similar to a JSON bin Postgres or something like that. So that was the table created. All the JSON goes to a BLOB, but a special format that can be optimized, can be indexed as we have seen. Um, I can directly select from that table. And this is what is cool. I can access to this document data store through the NoSQL API, SODA, but I can also access it with full uh, relational SQL. And this is what I'm doing there. A select on it where I have the BLOB 
that is not readable there. We have functions to read it, some metadata about when it was created or not, and, and an ID. OK, let me check the time. Perfect. I will continue now. Uh, so we, for the moment, uh, we have seen that we can create collections uh, from the SODA API, and they are stored as table. Uh, now that I'm starting to introduce some SQL concepts, some relational concepts, why not directly create relational tables rather than those two collections? Because I started to uh, want to normalize everything. I will do that with SQL Plus, and I will create a table there, a relational table, where I declare the columns. So this is not just a key and attributes in a JSON. I declare columns. Let me run that first. And rather than entering the data, because I have everything in a collection, I will query the collection to put that in a relational table, because we have functions to convert JSON collections to relational views. My collection there for departments was here. And I used the JSON table function, which transformed JSON to relational table. So from this uh, blob, and I mentioned the path in the blob, what is department number will go into the depth no colon. Uh, location will go into the location colon. And because it is a relational database there, I put some data types. I want to declare that location is a character string, for example. And there, I queried this relational table there. And I will continue on that to show also the power of uh, having a schema and having a relational uh, database. Uh, in addition to just storing data, I will add some constraints. And let me show first the key. I declare the key because different before I add a key and I put document in front of it. Here, I decide what is the key. And in a business entity, you don't have only one key. You have multiple candidate keys. For example, here, department number is a key. It is unique and it can be used to access to a, a department, department number. Uh, but the name as well, you don't have duplicate names in your company for for the different departments so i have two keys and here i decide about the primary key department number but i also declare the department name as another key i declare it with a unique constraint and you can also add more constraints to give more information to the to the database for example the information that location must be known there are no departments which are not somewhere so depart, uh, department location cannot be null. I declare all that, and I will show you a big advantage of it. One advantage first is that now in my code, I don't have to check if the location is uh, null or not, because I have this constraint. Without this constraint, if I read department and I have to display them if, in Java, for example, if I forget to test if it is null or not, I may have a null pointer exception at runtime. Here, because of the constraint, I don't have to code that. I can really do low code uh, when I have declared a lot of constraints. And what I'm showing you as well is that because of this knowledge that location always exists, the database can optimize the access to data. So here, I'm reading all departments. You can see all departments. And I'm checking the execution plan. This is a full scan on departments to see all departments. The interesting part is there in the starts colon. I had one full scan on the departments because I was querying the whole departments. Now, if I run a query where I explicitly want all departments which have a location, so location is not, uh, which have no location, location is null. Of course, we know that uh, we have put no information about it, but the optimizer, the database knows it as well. And then the plan for this query is still the same. You have to look at all departments, 
But finally, at execution time, you don't do it. This step has been started zero time. And then the answer for this query was immediate thanks to the constraints. The constraints is not only there to validate your data, it's there to uh, decrease the amount of code you have to put in, in, in your application and uh, decrease the amount of work the database has to do uh, just because it has this knowledge on the data. Okay, um, let me run this one and show you something with department and employees. So in the same way that I have created a relational table for departments, I am creating a relational table for employees. And uh, same thing, I'm reading the employee collection to put data in it, and I put data types. And that's another interesting thing in relational databases. You have more than numbers and, and, uh, and uh, strings. Here, I declare the higher date as a date. And then the database has the knowledge that it is a date and I will be able to query it with date arithmetics, like uh, adding one month, subtracting uh, one a day. Uh, and it Im immediately knows that the, the day after the 31 December is the 1st of January. If you manage dates a string, like in NoSQL databases, you have to do that in your code, less code with relational databases. So now I have my employee table and normalized as I did before with the collection, which means I have information about employees only and a reference to the department. As I did for departments, I declare the key. I have an employee number and I declare uh, this one as the primary key. I also declare that the department is not null, which means all employees must be affected to a department. I, I have this choice. I can decide in my data model that the application can manage employees that are not affected yet to a department. But uh, here I decide to, to have always a department for them and additional constraints. This department not only must be known, but it must be an existing department. And this is what I declare with a foreign key, the department number references, uh, the department table. And I've added here on delete cascade to mimic the hierarchical model. I show you that. Uh, first, let me create that, those constraints. In the hierarchical model I add, where I had a collection of departments and employees in them. If I removed a department, of course, because it was nested, the employees uh, were gone. And this is what I'm doing with on delete cascade here. For example, I query first the employees to show you that I have 14 employees, 14. And then I delete a department the sales department who needs sales, one row deleted. And then if I select again from employees, I have less employees because all employees from the sales department uh, uh, have been gone with the uh, department. This may be what you want in your, um, in your data model, in your application or not. You have the choice there. With a hierarchical model, you don't have the choice. Here, you have the choice. I can redefine exactly the same constraints. So I drop this one, I recreate it without mentioning on delete cascade, which is the default on delete restrict. And the difference is that I will not be able to delete a department when it has employees in it. This is what this message is telling me. And this message, that I can catch it from my application and tell to the user, so either employees there, you have to decide either you fire them before closing the department or you move them to another department or you just cannot remove the department from there. So I'm doing a rollback to going back to the previous states. That's also an advantage of relational databases. You manage transactions and then you can uh, go back uh, if you don't want to complete the transaction. If you have questions, do not hesitate to, um, 
to ask a question. And I will go a bit further there. Now I have two entities. I can manage employees. I can manage uh, departments. I've seen that I have a link between them to be sure that I cannot remove a department with, uh, with employees in them. But finally, from the application, you want this hierarchical view on data. This is what developers want, and this is why they like JSON and NoSQL databases. And for that, in relational databases, we have joins to join to table when you want it. Let me show quickly what is a join there. I join department and employees, and I tell in the query how I join it, because here the choice is obvious, but it can be more complex. For example, if you manage uh, flights, in 2020, there are not a lot of flights, but if you manage flights between airports, you will have two foreign keys to the airport table. And then you, you cannot just let the database guess that you want the destination air, uh, airport or original airport. So this is why in a join, you mention on what you join and uh, I order them as well. And I see them. And here you see the data in this simple table. and you see duplicates there. But that's very different from before. Before it was stored with duplicates and then you had the risk of inconsistency. Here it's only when we display it. And the default in SQL is to dis display everything as one table, which make, may uh, look uh, odd because why repeating manager, why repeating uh, research there? But the idea is that in a relational table or from a relational view, the result of a query, you can read any row like reading a sentence. This row means employee number 7900 is called James and is working as a clerk in department sales, which is in Chicago and this salary is... You, you have all information in one line, which make it easy for some access. Of course, af after, if you want to display it or, or put it in a file, maybe you want a different structure. But uh, the, the one goal of the relational database was this easy visualization with two dimension uh, table. But of course, uh, you have the choice. And what I will do here, I will show you that if I update one department, sales is now called cloud sales and i run the same query then everything is consistent and updated everywhere because it was thought uh, normalized only the result as duplicates so this is very different uh, you may want to see duplicates without storing them a nosql database will store everything pre-joined and then with a lot of duplicates Okay, if you don't want to see that as table, a line, if you want this nested idea, you have many ways to do it in, um, in the client tool in the application. For example, if I want to see the departments with their employees, like the thing I had in, uh, uh, at the beginning in my, in my collection, I can see it there from SQLCL just with a break on it. And you know that even if this is duplicate, when it is transferred on the network and uh, with cloud application, you have a lot of network transfer. When it is transferred through the network, because it is ordered, it is not repeated. And here I do not even repeat it on the screen if I want to visualize it like this. And what is very nice with relational databases. And this is why we choose to join at runtime. We may want to have different point of views on the same data. Here, I was interested by employees per department. And I'm doing this uh, from SQL CL there. I'm doing uh, something else. A colleague may be interested by uh, department in employees. Sorry, uh, this was the same 
I just change what select from department join. Yeah, no, uh, sorry, I just mentioned that here I'm still interested by department with the list of employees, but I want in addition to that to see the empty department. And this is a left outer join, and that's another reason why you want to join at, red, at runtime. This was not possible with the hierarchical model showing the empty department. Well, what, what I uh, started to mention uh, before was that maybe I have a colleague, a colleague that is not interested to list employees in the department, is more interested to list employees per day job. And on the same database, you can share the same database. Uh, you, you, you can query it from a different point of view, and that's a big advantage of this normalization. You put different business entity, business objects in different tables, and then at runtime, you can query them, and the relational database is powerful enough to find, to find uh, the right access path for that. OK, if you want to see the Java view on that hierarchical uh, JSON, for example, you can, but actually there is no, there is nothing like the JSON view on that. You have many views and here from SQL CL, I'm showing that you can choose to show everything as one object or each department as one object. For example, here using the JSON object from depth, so very simple query. I can see each department as a JSON object. I may want to show the department name and the employees in it as a JSON. So you choose what you want to show as JSON and what you want to show as dif different item. This one is aggregating all these objects to show that as one JSON only with a list of departments with a list of employees. And this is one line only, but you just add the pretty keyword there to pretty print it and, and see it like a hierarchical JSON. So that's, that's also another point. There is nothing like one JSON model. You have multiple JSON views on the same data. And this is why in relational databases, you store them as one and you query them with different functions to show different things. Okay. Now, quickly showing that I mentioned that I wanted to join the table, but I didn't have to code the algorithm. In NoSQL, you have no join. So if finally you join the the data, either it is pre-joined in the collection with the hierarchical nested uh, uh, collections, or you do it at runtime uh, from your code. You loop on one and you check the other one. And then you have to decide on the algorithm. There is a point where the loop is not uh, uh, optimized enough, and then uh, you may build a hash table to query it faster. Here, I just mentioned join, and the database choose the algorithm. For this data, the database decides, the optimizer decides that loop is nice. If I query just with a different predicate, which means I have different amount of data, the optimizer may choose that finally it's better to read all departments and read a uh, hash table in memory, cache it, and then do the loop on that. But you don't have to code it. The query is exactly the same and uh, the database will do it. In NoSQL, you have to code. You, you, you simplify the things in the database, but what you don't do in the database, you do it in your code. We have five minutes left, and I will show you something very quickly as well. I did a lot of things in an interactive way, and this is why I mentioned, for example, the employee numbers. But in an application, you never do that. You do not run different queries with for each employees. 
in an application, you will declare the different values you want to query and you declare once your access to the database and then you run it and then you have a cursor. This is called bind variables in Oracle. Uh, again, this simplifies your job as a developer and the job of the database and also for security. Here, I cannot have any SQL injection uh, putting something else than an employee number there. Here, if I concatenate the values, I have to, this risk. So from the application, what I mentioned there, there are two SQL languages actually, which are very similar for, for plenty of things, but there is one for ad hoc queries, like the data scientists uh, looking and drilling into the data in interactive mode uh, directly with SQL or SQL generated by a, a BI tool, for example. And there is the SQL that is embedded in programs, in, in Python in, in my case, or Java or anything. And there it's like a program that you compile, you declare the code, like when you uh, write your Java code and you compile it, and that's the prepare statement. And then you run it with different parameters. When you call a method in Java, you do the same. But this is often uh, overlooked because it's very easy to use this interactive uh, language in a program, but it, it is not optimized for performance and, and for security as well. In the four minutes that remain, I will mention, so that was more difficult to put in the Jupyter notebook. I want to, to show you two sessions. And this is why I will do some things from SQL CL and some other from uh, directly from, from the notebook from Python. Just to have, the goal is not to have two different tools. The goal is to have two different connections without uh, playing with the, 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 the connection names. So here I'm doing a very simple query, very simple for, for SQL. Uh, if you want to do the same on the NoSQL collections, you can try it. This looks at employees where the manager earns less than the employee. So in SQL, you just declare that you look at employees as employees, you look at employees as managers, you join that, and this is why you join at runtime. And there you compare the manager salary with the employee salary. And here I have two employees who have a higher salary than their um, manager. Very simple in SQL. In a NoSQL database, you need uh, more code to do that, but of course you can do that. What I want to show you here is that in another session, I start increasing some salaries. And here I am increasing the salary from Adams. In this session, same transaction. If I run the same query, this is this is the same query as I, uh, as I did above. Now Adams also earns more than his manager. But from another session, another user running the same query, he still sees only Scott and Ford. And the reason is that even if I started to do some modification on the salaries, maybe I've not finished my job. And until I commit my job, the others will see only what is there published, saved to the others. And actually in my transaction, I started to increase the salary of, uh, who was it? of Adams, but I also wanted to increase the salary of Scott. And then finally, when I did everything, I have only uh, Scott and Ford who uh, earns more than their manager. And then only when I commit it, if someone else queries it, 
he will see the data. So that's also very important in relational databases. We do not manage just changes like those crude operations, put and get items. We manage transactions. A whole business transaction is maybe increasing the salary of multiple people. And I cannot see the intermediate state only when it is done and committed, I can see it. Okay, that's the end of this session. Do you have any question on that? You can see that I added a few more things in, the, in this uh, Jupyter notebook with commands. We can, uh, you can even uh, check uh, something about the performance. So you can run it, uh, this Jupyter notebook, if you, uh, for example, you can run all, and, and this will run. I think that to be able to run it, you need a Google account because the, um, this is on Collab. So you need a Gmail account. Here I am connected with my uh, Gmail account. And it connects to my database. Uh, don't worry, it's on the free tier, the Oracle free tier. Everybody can have his uh, own free database, uh, but you can share this one if you don't put a lot of uh, data in it, it's perfect. You can also uh, drill down on this one to see how I connect from that. The Jupyter Notebook has um, an environment that I think is in Docker, it has Python, but uh, you have to install the instant client, and this is possible just uh, uh, with a wget and unzip. I also download uh, the wallet to connect to my database and I declare some Jupyter magic just to call easily the SQL CL and SQL Plus. Is there any question about this? And if you play with it and have question later, do not hesitate to reach me. I think everything is there, like my Twitter handle, which is probably the easiest, but you can also send me an email at frank.pacho at dbiservices.com. Uh, and yeah, don't hesitate if you have uh, questions. I'm checking the questions and answer, nothing there. I just let a few minutes if people have questions. Anyway, we can stay as long as we went there, but maybe you have other sessions to attend later. I hope you enjoyed uh, this virtual DOAG, which I find, of course, not as nice as when we all meet in November, but it's quite cool. Okay, no question, then I will stop the broadcast and thank you very much and enjoy the remaining sessions. Bye.